Hello all, uh, welcome to the second episode of Leading Minds. Today, I have got this golden opportunity to take you all along behind the scenes with our engineering team and especially uh, let you have a look along how do we as Mo Engage think about engineering, think about innovation, the vision that we have got in solving complex problems in meaningful ways. To do this, today uh, I have uh, with me Yash, who has been at the who, has, who is the founder and CTO for Moing It and he has been there with the company for now 11 years. Thanks, Harish. Thanks for the introduction. I think to start this discussion, it would be great to maybe you try to sum up how this journey from the very start to now has been for you. Uh, when I look back at the journey, I think time really flies is what I think because past 11 years, I think I didn't even realize that, okay, it has been so much time. Uh, I'm blessed to have such a big complex product to build and then when we started initially it was supposed to be a small product with Mo Engage as a mobile engagement platform but within the first year I have realized that it's not going to be an easy journey uh, because within the first three months we faced a problem where whatever the solution that we have built doesn't work anymore for the biggest customer we had on board. In the first six months I have realized that okay I need to think long term and I need to start thinking that it's not just point solutions we're going to build and we need to build scalable solutions. And we also need to think about how do we build solutions cost effectively. I think there are multiple things that I've found out over the period of time. And I think fundamentally, first thing that I have realized is how do you build scalable solutions, right? So until today, that I would say principle holds true. And uh, I always uh, thank God for uh, putting us in this place of solving complex problems and then putting up the team together to actually build Moengage as what is today. That's what I can think of in the last 11 years. What kind of leadership hiring or leadership thought process did you think of uh, when you were hiring to get the right people or, or build the team that is it is now? So I think there were, uh, broadly I would categorize my vision or the hiring principles are, I would say, the way that I wanted to establish the team into two main phases. So I think from beginning to the first six years post that, so it was a growth phase for us where we wanted more of a generalist. So initially when you I used to hire or I used to select people, it was more oriented towards can this person learn on their job or not? So right, that's the first thing I would used to look at. Second thing is, are they equipped enough to understand complex problems? And how do you quickly arrive at a solution, right? So that was the second, I would say, selection criteria for me. After six years, I've realized that probably the, the problems have become much more narrowed and uh, they have become much more complex as well. Post that, we started looking for specialists to solve those kind of problems. How do you smoothen this collaboration between product and engineering? How do you think about this? I tend to realize that looking them as a single team makes much more sense. I see a product team is at the center of the uh, company where they are the ones who needs tighter collaboration with either sales team or uh, you have support team or you have also the engineering team pairing up with them. And if you are able to work with the product team very closely and then visualize it as a one team, I think that would be the best way to start aligning things together. And lately, we have been trying to put every item under a bucket called, is it going to help the customer or not? And how much impact it's going to make? Rather than thinking in a way that, who is pitching it and what are they going to get out of it? It's better to think in a way that, what is the business impact we're going to make from this? And is the customer is actually going to get benefit from this? The product has this problem, like we have to retrospect ourselves and see how can we uh, help the customer better. How do we think about these three, scale, cost, and security of what we have got here? Or solutions we are building? When I see scale, I see look at it as a reliability, as a challenge where uh, it's easy to build a solution where you might say that, okay, it will work for one or two customers. Or let's say you... 2000 RPM or 3000 RPM, just to give an example, right? So today, Moengage operates about 1.3 billion monthly active users. And again, I thank God for giving us this opportunity to solve this problem. There are some fundamentals which you need to look at when we are trying to 
cater to the enterprise segment of our customers and then trying to build solutions accordingly at scale. So today we are talking about agentic solutions we talk about. I first go to my first principle saying that how do I build them in a horizontally scalable fashion and how do I build them in real-time fashion so that I don't have to solve these problems again, yeah. right? And one of the biggest points that a business can lose to its competition or lose their customers is if they're not able to innovate at the pace they want to. And when I see the scalability as a problem, if you don't solve it in the right way, you might have to reiterate again, which will again take the time of your business okay. outcomes. I think costs is where that that's where it comes into picture, where you can build a solution where customer is paying you $100, $100 and uh, you're probably spending $150 to serve it. Yeah. So then you are actually not doing business. You are doing charity, right? So that doesn't make sense. So probably if your customer is paying you $100, you might be doing your business or probably your cost should be not more than $20 or $30, right? So where you are able to save $80 and then you have to pay for others. Yep. So that's how I look to look at. And coming to that point now, if you add security to it, security to it, then you are becoming probably the best engineer possible according to you, right? So what I've seen initially is people tend to ignore the security principles, but being the custodians for the customer data, I think security is a very paramount at MoEngage where we can't let even a single data point of the customer slip order. That's where we have seen fundamental shifts. I think four to five years back, we started heavily investing into security. Not only engineering, but the entire company operates and also the way people are able to probably access machines, access data, everything has been flipped into 180, right? Probably there was at some point where initially you could access some data of the customers, but today I cannot see a situation where you cannot access the customer data without proper permissions into picture. Do you remember, do you recall something, you know, that might have been very transformative as a learning for you, but also the effort that went into it was quite, quite something that you remember now. Some of the transformation moments happened from the learnings that we had from the crisis, right? So obviously, I would imagine that Moengage has transformed like how a butterfly would transform, right? So uh, we have transformed from the state where we were. Um, so there used to be not a real-time processing. So we brought in Kafka after that. Yes. So it, it was a fundamental shift in terms of how you operate. So we were operating with SQS earlier. But when Kafka came into picture, we became more real-time. So that was the first transformation I could think of. And one thing I always believed is, or uh, fortunate enough again, is to have a team who suggested these things, right? So, and I encouraged team to do that. So Kafka was brought in with a suggestion. And then a later, a couple of people came and pitched an idea about what is today is called as flows. Used to be called as journeys, where they said that, can we inculcate a workflow builder into Moving Edge where who are our customers can come in and say that, if someone hasn't purchased anything, can you send a reminder to them? Okay. But if they don't act on that reminder, can you again send a reminder in probably another medium, right, for them to occur? So you can create a decision tree diagram. And then I took them to Ravi, who is our CEO, immediately on that day. And then we said that, okay, this is an idea we want to invest in. And post six months, we started building on this product. And that's one of the most used product today. And I can't think of a marketer or our customers working with all that product, right? So that's one of the transformation journeys we had. And another thing came four or five years back about, we had some SLA issues about segmentation service that we offer to our customers. Uh, we used to use Elasticsearch. And then we, uh, it used to be having your compute and storage together. So it was hard to scale. Uh, the SLAs were about, 30 minutes, P99% of the time you used to deliver it in 30 minutes. But what our customers were looking for more real time. So uh, we had spent about one, one and a half year in transforming that solution. And we went by decoupling storage and uh, compute. It operates today on uh, Trino and uh, S3. Um, S3 for storage and Trino to do the computing part. And today our SLAs are P99, uh, one minute, less than one minute. So that, that's a huge improvement we are able to give to our customers. Post that, we shifted multiple things. I think 
but today when i'm sitting here today i think there is another transformation that i'm visualizing or seeing and i'm excited for it which is where mo engage will become more agentic right so agentic is a buzz word for me if i have to put it in a at a simple sentences it's how can you help the customers achieve what they want to achieve probably in a faster fashion that's one thing and probably derive more insights what than what could they think of right okay today you might not be able to understand from the customer inflow that if you have to determine that if this person belongs to a high income or lower income or this person belongs to let's say uh, probably heavy shopper or not of these things right so these are the ones where i'm seeing llms can help and actually people try to solve this problem 10 years back or they were trying to solve this but with the growth of llms and gen a coming to picture i see that this is more affordable to the customers right now and they can actually and moingis can actually help the our customers to solve these problems and the engineering teams have to embrace agentic ai in fact i was speaking to the team last for five months telling that okay we need to transform ourselves embrace agents we need to build more agents don't think about uh, apis anymore apis are still going to be there yep. i don't have any doubt on that it's now more that people will talk about agents rather than apis probably agents will sit as a front face usually it used to be apis now agents will sit as a front face which is again apis are back uh, i mean are there behind agents also but um, i think these are the transformations we've seen and these are the transformation we're going through and i'm excited about these transformations and i always say to my team that if you are not changing that's when i think we are in trouble and if you are getting problems on a daily basis probably it's one way to think that you're growing and uh, and when you solve those problems probably you have achieved something right and i will say look forward to the problems and if these are good problems to have like, problems that we are getting while growing and then if you're not innovating will die so please be ready for the change and please try to think of projects which actually are transformative that's how what the message i typically give to the teams so how do we think about how do we think about uh, grooming the engineering leadership that we hire here uh, what process do normally they go through what kind of things do we want them to learn apart from the training skills that might already have yeah so th- this is something that's close to my heart because for me a team or i would say a leader is as good as the people they are working with right so i think for me when i this is how i try to groom people right so especially the leaders um they go through a lot of selection process i think i can talk about it later but when they come on board first thing i try to do is i try to give them space about understanding the ecosystem first and then the next challenge i give them is can they come up with some problems that they are seeing on the floor either in the product or in the technology and see if they are able to grasp the things actually that are happening on the floor or not giving them that space is necessary for them to understand how are they actually going to think about the product and then are they able to get on to the speed or not and how fast can they get on to the speed right it gives me these data points about how do i set them up for success not only the leadership but i, I look at every team member saying that i want to let's say if they choose to leave moengage i want them to leave proudly saying that they learned something from moengage right so and coming to the leadership part right so once they come and yeah. decide that this is the problem they have encountered the next thing i throw at them is or i ask them to do is can you now figure out which is more important and can you prom- propose a solution to it yeah and now can you take them to actually a solution phase to a implementation phase and execution phase can you see it through right I, there is one important aspect that i wanted to uh, get to right and this is about the people who aspire to be at mo engage to be in a company where long term thinking uh, problem solving for complex problems and it's not easy at all you know when i say this i do look back and think about the problems that we are solving and it's not easy right how do you look for what do you look for in people who who are aspiring to be here like they they might be technically super great right but they and this also comes from the inside that very recently i started seeing you 
be part of the final rounds uh, that we do with uh, uh, our archetypes or leads or engineering uh, managers, right? And I, I'm sure, you know, there must be something that you are thinking there. I've seen a slight shift where about two to three years, we might not have looked at the hiring in the right way. Yeah. But now I'm trying to uh, bring back those principles which had led the initial period where we felt that, okay, I felt that we had a very good team. And uh, I think from that perspective, when I looked at it, right, so sincerity is the first thing that I got. Like, definitely we want people who are very good at tech. I think that's the minimum baseline we are looking at. But people who are not sincere, I don't think they will realize their full potential. So whether the people are sincere or not, and do they have the hunger to grow or not, right? So this is the second thing that I look at. And the third thing is whether they can take an action on it or not. I try to typically put this into an initiatives category where are they self-driven and can they fight their own battles and then if something, a hurdle comes, can they get over it? Do they need extra push from someone or can they drive it on their own, right? I think these are the fundamental things apart from problem solving is a must. Thank you, Yash. This was a great uh, discussion that we had. Really wonderful insights from you. A great learning from me and the viewers there. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Harish. It was great speaking to you.